How's it going? Welcome back. This is James from James Films. Today I've got another breakdown for you with some elements of this project available over on my Patreon linked in the description. Today I was having a lot of fun with making a pool scene in Blender, but this time instead of using my procedural material that kind of just simulates caustics, I wanted to go for the real thing. And actually in the latest version of Blender, there is the ability to add in caustics into your render and they're actually pretty believable. Uh, with a little bit of tweaking and post to kind of up uh, the brightness in some parts, like you see these little sparkles here. Uh, I added those in in post, but out of Blender, it, it really doesn't look that much different. So it's it's pretty good, uh, pretty good result. You can see this is the raw result out of Blender. We got some really nice caustics. If I kind of zoom in a little bit on this here and kind of pull around, this really came out quite well. I'm very pleased with the result, and this was you know all done in Blender, uh, just with like a little bit of post processing to get those sparkles here in the end, but I wanted to walk through kind of how I put the scene together and the inspiration for this. And sometimes I kind of take this as a practice for myself just to, you know, try to model off of an, Im an image or of a scene or a place that I visited. Um, so this time I was inspired a bit by the Mediterranean coast and I found this really cool image on Instagram here uh, of this scene here. You got this kind of like rocky wall with like a, you know, almost like a natural looking pool kind of built in and in concrete into the face of this cliff with an ocean scene in the background. So I kind of modeled off of that um, to kind of get to this. So I'm gonna walk through in Blender here, just kind of talk about some of the elements and how I go about approaching creating a scene uh, like you see right here. So if I uncheck this off for a second here, so let me just turn off a lot of my extra elements here just so you can kind of uh, highlight specifically uh, key parts of the scene as I'm putting it together. So if I just kind of turn all of this off for a second here, let me just also turn off my towel that's here in the background. Okay, so what you see here is uh, this pool that I've kind of modeled up here. And you can see uh, over on the right, uh, I made this actually using a Bezier curve. And if I turn off uh, this ocean for a second here, you can really see it. So I actually started with a Bezier curve. Uh, if I kind of tab into edit mode, you can see what this looks like. Let me select everything here and kind of, oops. Let me select all, there we go. And let me just pull this up so you can kind of see it. So this is actually just modeled using uh, Bezier curve. And so I used uh, the free handle type for this and just kind of modeled like a, you know, a somewhat similar look to that kind of almost like star shaped type looking pool that I saw from the uh, reference photos. I saved this as a backup and then I converted one of them into a, uh, a mesh which I then actually filled in. So you see this one right here actually filled in. I actually duplicated it, resized it a little bit. This is maybe a little bit of a roundabout approach to getting to here, but I used uh, one of the other ones as a, um, a Boolean to kind of cut out this hole in the pool here. And then I just actually separated this out so I had uh, the legit model for it, if that makes sense. So it was kind of just like a little bit of uh, cutting it, but I, I typically for these kind of irregular shapes like to do it with Bezier curves just to kind of have the flexibility of designing a little bit more. And then you can kind of extrude things out and get a little bit creative. And you also have the flexibility of going back to your original Bezier curve and kind of modeling it a little bit to your liking too. Um, so for the key hero element of this render, it was this uh, water that you see here. So to actually create that, if I go back into that backup section again, turn off my pool elements, um, this is actually made using a plane. So I added in uh, just a, a normal plane. If I tab into edit mode, you can see it's just a plane I've added in. And then over in the modifiers tab is where the magic kind of came to life with this. So I added in an ocean modifier for this and uh, tweaked a couple parameters of it to get to uh, kind of like the little bit of like pool ripples that you see here. Um, just very subtle tweaks with this have pretty drastic results. So you don't need to go kind of too over the top of it. So the first thing I did uh, was actually up the resolution in the viewport um, just so that it gives me a little bit more uh, to work with here. So if I put this down to its default, which is one, you see it's like pretty much flat. Um, and then as you kind of go up, you get more and more of this kind of, you know, cool ocean ripples. But be careful if you go too high, it kind of does get a little bit bogged down in your viewport just because it's a lot of geometry. Um, you can also go down to this spectrum here. And what I did, it, it comes with, I think, shallow water or turbulent ocean, I forget which one, as the default one. Um, but I, I like to do established ocean. Uh, I think it just kind of gives me a better, you know, look for kind of the waves and stuff that you get here uh, that you'd have for a pool. And then I play a lot with the scale of the waves themselves. So again, I don't want to go too over the top. If I was to turn this up a lot, you can see it gets kind of crazy. 
and you start to have almost like this geometry just kind of shearing and intersecting with itself. So you don't need it to be that crazy. So actually doing a value like really low, like point, you know, point two is maybe even too much. I think I ended up going with like point one three or something like that. You know, having something very small like that is really all you truly need for this. And then if stuff isn't looking quite right, you can always mess around with the size here too um, to kind of go up and down. Uh, but keep in mind this, if you go too small with this, you'll kind of need to retweak some of the stuff with the wave parameters because this gets like a little bit too choppy for what you maybe seen a pull, like a pull, unless it's like a, a storm hitting it, it's not gonna look that ripply. So once again, if I look at my reference photo, you can see there's like some subtle ripples here that are kind of generating these caustics, but it's not crazy, you know, unless someone has like just jumped in the pool or something. Um, so that's how I made that. Um, I saved this as like a backup and actually applied the ocean modifier. And then I went back into, in this pool elements part here and actually just kind of cut out the geometry I wanted. So all that extra kind of fluff that was around there, I really didn't need for my scene. It was just kind of bogging stuff down. Uh, so I just tried to simplify this as much as possible. So if I tab into edit mode on this um, pool water here, you can see it's pretty dense. You know, there's quite a bit of geometry there, but it's much simpler than it was with all that extra geometry that was attached to it as well. I also use curves uh, to um, modify or create this uh, little pool ladder. And again, this will be included in Patreon as well. And I just did a little tweaking with uh, this metal material. So I actually got the uh, image textures for this from CC0 textures, and then just kind of did a little bit of tweaking to get it to where I, I really liked it um, to kind of have this like reflective metal look with like a little bit of grunge to it. So if I zoom in, you can see there's like a little bit of grunge, you know, as if, you know, over time, this is kind of weathered a little bit, which naturally would happen, you know, if it's out in you know the sun getting you know burnt by the sun or you know having different dust and particles and stuff brush it um so i thought that came together really well and so that is just composed of if i go into the backup again sorry keep opening this up and then unchecking it again um i've got this uh where is it if i turn off my ocean plane and let me turn off my pool elements so you can see this um, so if I tab into edit mode on this, uh, you can see it is been converted into a curve, but it actually started out initially or as um, a mesh rather, but actually started out as, uh, as curves that I just kind of simply bent around and then I used a mirror modifier on one of them so that it would you know, mirror it perfectly across uh, the Y axis here. And I just made a simple plane and then just used an array modifier, gave it a little bit of a bevel just for you know, a little bit of um, kind of more natural look to it so the edge wasn't as sharp and then just kind of matched it to this ladder and then I combined them together uh, to create my ultimate final pool ladder. So that is how I put together all of the pool elements there. And so now this is where the fun began with a little bit of the uh, lighting here. So if I turn back on my lighting, I use the physical starlight and atmosphere add-on for this one as well too. So I, you could just use HDRIs, typically I, I would just do that, but for this one, I wanted to use an HDRI or the physical Starline Atmosphere um, just because I really quite enjoy this add-on a lot. If you can't tell, I use it quite a bit. It also gives me the flexibility of making time lapses and stuff too, which I always like. Um, but you can see uh, already the effect is taking place here. So how does this effect work with Caustic? So if you, you got to make sure you're updated to the latest version of Blender. Uh, I think it's Blender 3.2 it's up to. It moves so quickly. It's kind of almost hard to keep up with how quickly the software uh, is you know being developed but this is the latest version I'm rocking and for this one the way it works is uh, super simple um, so a lot of programs like Redshift, Octane, V-Ray they already have this caustics built into it Blender up until this point didn't have this kind of caustics thing to my knowledge I mean there are ways to kind of hack it a little bit or I think you could use like Octane Render Engine with Blender I've never actually experimented too much around with that but um, you know over in Cinema with 4D, uh, Cinema 4D with Redshift it's it's super simple to do uh, in Blender, there's never that option. So now it's super cool to do. And the way it works is you need uh, an object that's going to be casting your caustic. So in our case, we've got this pool uh, water here. And uh, I'll go over the material that I designed for this in a second here. Um, super simple. Again, I literally just used the principle of BSDF for it. So this is our caustics caster. And the way to see how that is actually casting caustics is if you go over to your object properties, uh, sometimes this is hidden, but if you click on shading, and then scroll down, you can see there's this caustics tab now. And uh, there's two options. Uh, one is to cast shadow caustics. The other is to receive. So we want this to cast it since it's our water. So I just have checked that on. And then if I hide that for a second, um, we want something to actually receive our caustics so that they actually display. And so in our case, that's going to be this uh, pool plaster. And I've made a custom plaster material here as well. 
Again, super simple. This is also up on my Patreon too, but I use a, a bit of vertex coloring to kind of paint a little bit of this kind of bluish texture into the bottom. Um, just so that it looks not one color, not as uniform. Uh, I thought that would look a little bit nicer as if there's like, you know, some stains or water stains or water damage, similar to what, again, if we look at our reference, there's kind of like a little bit of like staining here. This like seemed to be like a little bit more orangish up at the top. This is like kind of like a darker bluish green below. So it just kind of have stained that a little bit with this plaster material. And again, if I go over my object properties, you can see over in caustics, I've checked this one to be uh, the receiver. Uh, for shadow caustics and also actually for my ladder too i've also made that receive them you won't really see them as much um, because it's kind of a small surface also very reflective so it's not really going to show it as much but um if you were to just have that you would not be seeing caustics yet because you actually need a light to be assisting with your caustic shadow so i have my physical starlight sun which comes with uh your physical starlight atmosphere I felt like that wasn't having a strong enough effect, so I've actually added in a sun lamp as well with quite a bit of power to it. So if I go over here to my light, you can see 32 strength. And over in the lighting, so for both of these, for starlight and this sun, um, right in your main uh, light properties, you'll have a shadow caustics uh, ability here too. So if you just check that on, that will now allow you to cast some caustics on your pool. And so just looking at that, that is pretty awesome. It really, really came out quite well. I was very pleased with the result. Uh, again, this is it raw out of Blender. Uh, it really looks nice. I mean, I might play around a little bit more with the ripples if it's a little bit too strong, but honestly, I think this is a really good first start with just messing around with the caustics and Blender. I'm very pleased with how this came out. Um, and very excited to kind of keep working on this. So what you see right here will be uh, available on my Patreon for download. Uh, so you can check that out in the description, play around with it. Uh, you know, all the settings and stuff are there too. So you don't need to tweak that. Um, so if you just wanted like a little reference as you're getting started, it's quite simple as I just showed you, that's the process. Um, but sometimes it does take a little bit of tweaking, uh, particularly if you run into any issues. Um, I found like the, the biggest issue is typically with what's casting the caustics. Uh, so this water, for example. So if you're not really seeing them, kind of play around with your ocean modifier. Maybe if you have already committed this, you won't be able to change that. But before you kind of you know apply your ocean modifier, you know zoom in on one part and then isolate that. So if you ever want to just render like one part of your render, if it's kind of hard to see, uh, you just kind of go over. Uh, you can zoom into where you want to be. So I want to maybe just isolate this one part right here by the ladder. I hold down Control and then B. And this gives you this like kind of crosshair thing and you can just drag over to a part of your render and it will just render this like one region. So now you can kind of zoom in really closely at this and see exactly the effect this is having. That looks awesome actually if you zoom in really close. That looks pretty realistic to my eye. Um, so this is kind of a nice way so your computer isn't chugging too hard if you have like a really big plane of water. Um, you can kind of just isolate this one region. So I'll often do that just to kind of, you know, isolate certain parts. And if you want to get back out of that, just hit Control, Alt, and B, and then it just renders everything again. Um, and if you don't want to be, you know, rendering everything outside of the viewport region, once again, go over to uh, this little printer looking thing, the out output properties, and then just check on uh, just to render this render region. So that's the majority of this piece here, honestly. Uh, it was a lot of just working on this water, tweaking it. Um, but then I obviously wanted to kind of match a bit closer to that reference that you saw. There's those cool rocks and stuff uh, that appear there. So what I did for that was I brought in some rocks uh, that I have here from Quixel just to kind of fill out the scene here. I have photo scanned some of my own rocks that I've actually released on Patreon as well. So you can download those too. I'm going to plan on going out and doing a bit more. I've got a couple like hiking trips coming up here. So hoping to scan a couple more rocks of different environments. I've got like a lot of beach rocks, I'm hoping to get some more kind of like foresty rocks uh, for you on the Patreon too. But for now there's uh, beach rocks available. So for this, uh, I'm not gonna include this in the Patreon because these are paid assets, but um, these I used to kind of fill out that frame, which I thought was quite nice. You can see the background looks kind of weird. So for that, I just actually got an image from uh, Unsplash and I can include this also in the Patreon too. It's a royalty free image. So I thought that looked kind of nice. You get this nice kind of like ocean off in the background uh, to kind of work into the scene quite well. And then I've added in like a bunch of plants too. So I added in uh, some stuff from Terrascape add-on to kind of fill out some of the kind of tropical plants that you see. Uh, and then I've added in a bunch from one of my favorite add-ons as well, which is this vegetation one from Bee Production. Uh, these are all linked in the description too if you want to purchase these. Uh, they really speed up my workflow quite a bit, so I'm not modeling all of these plants from scratch. It's a really quick and easy way to get those going in. 
And then I added in some flowers to the scene just for a little bit of pop of color. And the inspiration for that actually came from messing around a lot with uh, an AI called Midjourney. I've been feeding it a lot of my renders just to kind of see what it will create based on that as inspiration with a bit of a prompt kind of inspired again by a lot of my renders. I'll just like pretty much type up the description of what's included in my render, hit go. And a lot of the times my uh, Midjourney AI has been spitting back out a lot of these kind of interesting orange marigold type things. So I wanted to use a little bit of that for just a pop of color, just to contrast with the very bluish green. You have a little bit of brightness from that. Um, so really cool uh, little bit of brightness there. I used, uh, just for a little bit more interest in this scene, I added in uh, a little bit of a, a stone building here from Kitbash 3D. Uh, so that was just super simple. I've actually modeled a bunch of stuff like this on my own too. Actually just this past week released um, a really cool cathedral model that I put together. Um, using a lot of uh, Bezier curves as well, actually, to generate it. So you can actually download that over on uh, my Patreon too, so that's available. Um, so that was really fun too. And then added in some other small details that you might not notice at first glance, but just you know for that cozy beach feel to it, I added in <laughs> some wine glasses and like a wine bottle here, which I got from Blender Kit. Um, you know, you can model this on your own, but just for little details like that that I don't want to spend too much time putting together. I'll just usually pull from something like, you know, Blender Kit's pre-made assets. The one asset I did want to make on my own was a towel kind of draped over the rocks as if, you know, someone had just jumped in the pool and they were leaving their towel up on the rocks. Uh, so if I turn this back on, you see there's this kind of like cool towel that looks like it actually blends in pretty well with the scene, um, kind of draped over this rock. And the way I did that was actually a cloth simulation. So I set this rock uh, beneath it here. Uh, if I go over to the physics properties, I set it as a collision object and then really cranked up the friction a lot because this thing kept sliding off it. Added in a, a plane, um, just gave it like a loop cut, su super simple loop cut, uh, made it a cloth simulator. You won't be able to see this because I already applied it all to this, but originally below, or instead of the solidify here, there was like a cloth simulation. I uh, didn't really touch the settings too much on that. The main settings I touched were just this one for the rock, just to kind of keep it on just placed the plane above it and then dropped it on the rock and it kind of naturally, you know, conformed to that rocky surface. I might go back in future iterations of this kind of stuff to make this look a little bit better because it does look a little bit unnatural there. Like maybe it's a little bit too straight edge. I kind of want to have this like a little bit wavy and I could always go in and actually sculpt this using, you know, the cloth brush. Uh, there's actually a really good cloth brush available now in Blender if I scroll all the way down here, cloth. You can actually use this to kind of like deform some of the edges of these things a little bit more, um, add a little bit more kind of waviness into it to break it up. Um, so I, I just did that for um, making this towel to kind of drape it over, applied the cloth simulation uh, simulator, applied the subdivision surface to it. And then I actually added in a solidify with a very, very small amount of thickness. This doesn't really make a huge difference, but if I zoom in, uh, you can see what difference it makes. This is without the solidifier. It literally looks like a piece of paper. Um, and if you've ever looked at a towel, it doesn't look that flat. It does have like a little bit of subtle thickness. It is pretty thin still, but it does have a little bit of that subtle thickness to it. So I added in uh, a solidify. So if I just toggle that on and off, you can see it just adds like a little bit of kind of fluff to it. Uh, I have this kind of custom velvet material that I've made. I've also released this on material on my Patreon. Um, and the way it works is uh, you just go over to this RGB color here and you can just select whatever color you want and it just changes it pretty easy. So it's a nice little material and it has pretty good results. I've used this for a couple of my other renders, like those kind of cozy uh, carpeted rooms. I use this material quite a bit for it. Um, so that was really the last element. Um, and then I just hit render. And for my render properties, people often ask, um, maybe I was a little bit too high with the sample count here, but I was doing this as a still image, so I wanted to you know, have a pretty good result. And there's also a lot of light bounces going on for this caustics here. So I have my samples at 800 uh, with optics denoising set on. And again, this is the final result immediately out of Blender. This is no post-processing whatsoever done on it. Um, oops, that's a different render. Um, this is with no post-processing. This is with a little bit of color correction just to kind of warm stuff up and added in a little bit of sparkles to the water there. Um, so pretty cool. So I had a lot of fun with this one and I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this kind of break down the process. This is a new type of video I've been putting together uh, recently just to kind of walk through things, not necessarily step by step, but just macro scale talking about the different concepts and stuff, giving you some tips and tricks and talking about some of the pitfalls that I've fallen into that you can hopefully avoid uh, when you're working through your own projects as well. And again, a lot of the parts of this are available over on my Patreon, so be sure to check that out as well. And always let me know in the description what other kind of stuff you wanna see on the channel too. I'm always looking for good suggestions for what people wanna see. Uh, as always, like and subscribe, and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.